chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. However, we will peek back at 23. Hebrews chapter 10, we'll start in verse 23, we'll read through 25, then we'll pray, and we'll jump in. Hebrews is kind of toward the back of your Bible. The author of Hebrews had worked his way up to making his main point, and that is encouragement to his audience who are being tempted to turn from their faith in Jesus Christ. And we saw last week in the verses we looked at that word of encouragement, that they would stand firm, that they would persevere, that they would not give up. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us be concerned about one another in order to promote love and good works, not staying away from our worship meetings as some habitually do, but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you, dear Lord, and I pray that in these few verses that we would find encouragement and strength today, dear Lord, that as we come together as a body of Christ, that we would find encouragement and love, dear Lord, just being together. I pray, God, that in these few minutes that your Holy Spirit would speak to us, that you would speak through me, dear Lord, that you would help us to hear the words that we need to hear, that you would help only the words that we need to hear come from my mouth today, and that your Spirit would just let us see and hear your word this morning, God. I pray, dear Lord, that you would just hide me behind the cross, that you would help me to be able to preach and teach in a way that brings Glory to Jesus Christ and everything that is done. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What we saw last week in the last verse we looked at, which is verse 23, is we saw this, this call to the audience here. That they would not give up in the midst of their trials, in the midst of their persecution, in the midst of whatever it was that they were going through the author of Hebrews, as he's been trying to make the point through the whole book, is do not give up on Jesus Christ. Do not lose faith in Jesus Christ. For he who promised is faithful. If God has promised you eternal life and forgiveness of sins, if God has promised to be with you in the midst of your deepest, darkest days, then God will be with you. God will deliver you. And even if we suffer in this life, we will spend an eternity with God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, these are the promises of God, so do not give up. Do not give up on your faith and turn to anything else. Now, maybe this is fair to say that the audience that he's writing to here were having a crisis of faith. Maybe you've heard that phrase before. Maybe you've had a crisis of faith before. A crisis of faith is where you have faith in Jesus Christ, you have faith in the Word of God, you have faith in who God is, you believe God's Word, you believe what it says, you've trusted in Jesus Christ, and something occurs in your life that begins to cause you to question who God is. Question the goodness of God. Question your faith and Jesus Christ. And that is exactly what was going on to the audience here. These were people who had come to faith in Jesus Christ, but yet for whatever reason, they were being tempted to turn from Jesus Christ. They were, they were on the edge, and some of them, it sounds like, had already walked away. They had already given up on Jesus Christ. They had already turned from their faith. And the book of Hebrews is an encouragement not to turn away from your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, they were going through hardships. The audience that is being written to here was going through hardships. There was, there was difficult things that they were going through. There were was, there was some trials. There were some, some difficulties, maybe even from other Jews, some pressure saying, hey, you need to come back to the old way. They were really being tempted. They were really being pressured. They were, it appears, suffering in some way, and it was that suffering that was undoubtedly causing them to question the goodness of God or doubt the goodness of God. And that is what a crisis of faith is. Now, 
most of the time, those who have come to faith in Jesus Christ and who have walked with Christ for some years and who are familiar with the Word of God, most of the time, when things are going good, there are no crises of faith in our life. When things are going well, we typically don't question God. We typically don't have a crisis. Sometimes maybe that's the case. But typically, the real crises of faith come in our life when something bad happens. That's when the rubber really meets the road. It's easy to serve God. It's easy to have faith in God. It's easy to worship God when things are going well. But we begin to have a crisis of faith when things begin not to go so well. When the things that are occurring in our life don't line up necessarily, at least in our minds, with what it says about God. And we begin to have difficult seasons in our life. We begin to go through hardships in our life. We lose somebody that we love that's very close to us. We have some experience in our life that's traumatic. And when we have those experiences, we say, wait a minute. I thought God was good. If God is good, then why is this bad thing happening? If God has promised to watch over those who are His and to take care of them and to protect them, then why in the world is this tragedy happening to me? And then doubt begins to creep in. And then we begin to question God. And then we begin to question God's Word. And then we begin to say, Is any of this even true? Is God even real? If this is the God that that I've been reading, if He is real, is He even a God who's worth following? If this is what He allows His people to go through and to endure, and those moments are when we begin to have a crisis of faith in our life. Now, we may have been reading through this book all along and say, well, I'm not going to be like these. I'm I'm not in the same boat as the Hebrews. I'm not going back to the old sacrificial system. Well, it doesn't matter what you're going back to. What matters is, is what you are coming from. And what they were coming from was faith in Jesus Christ. And what they were going to was leaving that faith in Jesus Christ. And that's the real difficulty. And that's why we have to be on guard. That's why we always have to be on guard and we always have to be in God's Word and we have to believe and we have to trust without a shadow of a doubt that God is good. And we need to be reminded of that and it's hard for us to believe that sometimes. It is hard for us to believe that when we see the evils that go on in this world, when we see the hardships that we face. And some of you may be sitting out there today and you may be, as I say these words, you may be saying, I don't see how you can say that. You don't know what I've been through. But I tell you today because I cannot tell you anything else that God is good. And you may say to me after church, but why? But why this? But why this? But why the other? And maybe I can give you an answer that's halfway decent, or maybe not. Maybe I can't give you an answer that's going to satisfy you in any means whatsoever. But I can tell you this, that God is good. And I can also tell you this, that we do not understand the ways of God. It is beyond us to comprehend the things that a perfect and loving and good God does when they don't make sense to us. But God's ways are higher than our ways and God's thoughts are higher higher than our thoughts. And so we trust in the Lord with all our heart and do not rely on our own understanding. Now I say today that God is good knowing full well that life is hard. I'm not pretending for a second that the tragedies and the hardships and the things that we face in our life are not difficult and they are not real and there are times that it doesn't feel like God is at work and it doesn't feel like God is present. But I want to tell you today that God is good and God loves you. And that's all I can tell you. I wish I could tell you, here's why God does this and here's why God does that and here's why it's all going to be good. But I don't know. Because I'm not God. I'm just a guy that's struggling with you. That goes through the hardships and sees the difficulties and sees the evil and says, Why God? Why do you allow this to happen? Why do you allow good people to suffer? But what we cannot ever allow ourselves to do is to question the goodness of God. Because the moment we begin to question the goodness of God, a crisis of faith may soon follow. 
And that's what's going on with the audience here in the book of Hebrews. And that may be what's going on with you today. But that's why we read these words. That's why we come on the Sundays we don't even feel like it. When we come when things are falling apart and we're questioning God, we come because we need to be reminded that the, He who is promised is faithful. That Jesus Christ didn't die on a cross for no reason, but that he died to accomplish the will of God so that everything could come together just as it needs to be. And we don't always understand how God is working things together for the good of those who trust in him. But all I can tell you today is the truth of God's word says that he is. And there is nothing else that I can offer you today. And I can tell you this, there's nothing else the world can offer you today. If you turn from the faith in Jesus Christ, if you quit trusting in the Word of God, there is nothing else you can trust in because there is hope only in Jesus Christ. And that's what we saw last week. We saw that He calls His audience to draw near to God in what? In faith. He calls them to draw near in faith in the hope that they have in Jesus Christ that He who has promised is faithful. God is with us today, and God cares about us today, and God sent Jesus Christ to die for us today so that through Jesus Christ we will have the strength to make it through the days that we can't make it. And even on the days that we have faith in God, that our faith begins to waver, we are like the man in the New Testament that says, I believe, but help my unbelief. And there are days in our life, if we are honest at Christians, there are days in our life that we may begin to question and we may begin to doubt and we may begin to really struggle with our faith when we go through that really difficult, trying, hard time. And most of you have been through one of those. You may be going through one now, and if you have not, you will one day. And we need to remember the Word of God when we go through those difficult times. That it is through our faith that we find hope in Jesus Christ. And so his audience is really struggling here. And maybe some of you are really struggling today. They're really struggling. But he gives them some fantastic advice. He gives them some fantastic advice. And what he tells them is, is to get together. Y'all need to get together and you don't need to stop getting together. Now, what we call that is church. And when we do that, it's on Sunday mornings. But we do it at other times as well. It doesn't matter when it is. It doesn't matter where it is. But what the author of Hebrews tells us is that we need not to forsake the gathering of ourselves together. He says that at the end of verse 24. Or no, excuse me, in 25. uh, Not staying away from our worship meetings as some habitually do. So here we have a group of people whose faith is hanging in the balance. And he's telling them, look, in the midst of your fight, in the midst of your struggle, what you don't need to do is avoid being with other Christians. Avoid fellowshipping with other Christians. You guys need to come together. There are some who have gotten into the habit, he says, of of, of not gathering together with other Christians. But what he tells them to do in the midst of their difficult time is you guys need to continue to get together and worship God. Now it's important for us that we remember that we need to take a time, that we need to come together and we need to be with one another as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. That's where we're going to find our hope. That's where we're going to find our strength. Now there are days that we wake up, Sunday mornings, that we don't feel like coming to church. And if we're honest, there are some of them Sunday mornings that we just don't come to church. Now, I'm not saying that we don't sometimes have a a legitimate reason. I mean, sometimes we're sick. Sometimes there are legitimate reasons why we don't come. But sometimes we just don't come because we just don't want to come. And it's real easy to take a Sunday off and to take two Sundays off. And pretty soon it's real easy to completely get out of the habit of coming together with brothers and sisters in Christ to worship God, to lift one another up. It's real easy to get out of that habit. But it's real important for us that we stay in that habit. Now there will be Christians sometimes that will say, well I can be a Christian and I don't have to go to church. Well that is true. You can certainly be a Christian and you don't have to come to church. But I would like to think and I hope for everybody that comes that there's something that we, that we get from church. 
that there's some blessing that we receive from church, that there is some blessing for us to say, God, I'm going to take some time out of my life, and I'm going to come, and I'm going to worship you, dear Lord. I'm going to sing these songs to you, God. I'm going to come, and I'm going to sit through Sunday school, and I'm going to listen to your word, and I'm going to try to grow in your word, and I'm going to sit through a sermon, dear Lord, and I want to listen to your word so that I can grow in your word. God, I want your Holy Spirit to come and to work in my life. I would like to think that there is some blessing that we receive from coming together and being in God's house. And maybe you say, I don't like the songs we sing. The Sunday school teacher don't do a very good job. Half the sermons are too long and don't make no sense. Even if all of those things are true, I would still like to think that you get a blessing from being around brothers and sisters in Christ. I'd like to think that when you walk through that door, as everybody begins to come up to you and begins to hug you and begins to shake your hand and begins to say, Brother, how are you doing? Sister, how are you doing? It's good to see you. How was your week? I'd like to think that there is some blessing that we get as brothers and sisters in Christ from being with one another. Now, I'll tell you this. Y'all don't ever do this. And I'm the worst person in the world uh, because I'm the preacher. And I've done this before. But there have been some Sunday mornings that I just did not feel like coming to church. Now, y'all probably had never done that before. That I was in a bad mood and I didn't feel like coming in. Just one, some, more, some, some days you just not feel it. Some Sundays you wake up and you're like, praise the Lord, it's a beautiful day. And some days you're just like, oh, I just don't want to do it, you know. They're going to ask me how I'm feeling and I've had a horrible week and I'm just going to lie and tell them everything is great and I just don't feel like it and they're going to ask me about this and they're going to ask me about that and there are some Sundays that we just don't feel like it and I've had a couple of those in my life but I'll tell you this too. I've also had some of those Sundays where I was like, God, I'm going to do it and I went and then being in the presence of God's people and being in the presence of God's word and seeing smiles on people's faces. I come in with just a bad attitude, and I left saying, thank you, God. Thank you for changing my heart. When I didn't feel like coming, God, thank you for showing me your goodness. It's good to be in God's house. And maybe not every Sunday school lesson's good, and maybe not every sermon's good, and maybe not every song is good, but maybe there are some things in, in church that we're missing. Maybe there are some beautiful moments that we miss that that bring joy to our life. Maybe there's some joy there. Maybe you say, I I get tired of coming. I don't want to come because I ain't getting nothing out of it. Well, maybe, just maybe you're not putting anything into it. Maybe you're coming with a bad heart. Maybe you just come to church every day and say, well, what can the church do for me in this way? And what can the church do for me in that way? And how can the church help me in this way? Maybe we need to change our mindset and say, God, how can I serve in the church? What can I give to the church? How can I help this church? How can I be involved in these ministries? How can I be involved in this community? How can I be there to love all my brothers and sisters in Christ and put them a card in the mail and pick up the phone and check on them and drop by and see how they're doing and ask them how they're doing and tell them I love them and tell them that I'm praying for them. Maybe as much as we get out of church, maybe we need to be putting that much back in the church. Maybe we need to say, God, I'm not feeling it today, but God, help me to see your joy and help me to see your grace and help me to see your love and help me, God, in some way of being here with these brothers and sisters in Christ. Help me to find you in some way and see some way that I can help them. Let me t- I'll tell you a good example of joy, of just a little joy that I saw in church last Sunday. Last Sunday we had, had the Lord's Supper after the church was over and everybody begins to walk up. And I'll tell you something that was just beautiful. I was standing here, and I had my head down. I was praying. I, I kind of looked up, and there I saw this young lady, little little girl, that just had gotten baptized a few weeks ago. And for the first time in her life, she was partaking of the Lord's Supper with her dad right there by her side. And I said, thank you, God. What a beautiful, what a beautiful thing to see. What a beautiful joy to see that. And maybe there are things like that that we can see around our church all the time if we just look. Maybe on those days where we say, I just don't feel like coming. Maybe on those days where the sermon wasn't that good. Maybe just maybe you saw a brother and sister in Christ and they really need you. Maybe they're suffering and they're in pain. And maybe you just go home and say, God, I'm not doing good. But I pray for that brother and sister in Christ. 
Regardless of how I feel today, dear Lord, regardless of what my heart is like, God, I pray for them because they need you. I pray for their family. I pray for their situation. And do you know that it almost never fails in my life? That when things are just rotten and my heart is just rotten and it's not in the right place, that when I begin to pray and begin to pray for other people, it's the most beautiful thing in the world how God begins to just kind of deal with us. Maybe you've experienced that. But there's a lot of benefit that we get when we come together as brothers and sisters in Christ. There's a lot of benefit that we get as we try to grow in the Word together as we try to lift one another up, as we praise God for the work that He does in this church and the people in this church and how He uses us and how He blesses us. And so what does the author of Hebrews tell his audience? He says, look, you guys are struggling, but what you don't need to do in the midst of your struggle is quit coming together because there is beauty in the body of Christ. It's a crazy thing. When we need to hear God's Word most, when we need to be around other brothers and sisters in Christ the most, oftentimes those are the times that we don't want to come to church the most. We don't feel like it. We don't want to do it. We don't be around the people. But when we need it the most, is the time we don't want to come the most. But those are the times that we've got to make the effort. That we got to say, okay, God, I don't feel like coming. I'm, I'm, I don't understand your word. I'm questioning, God, maybe some things that are going on. I don't want to question you, God, but I'm struggling. So, God, let me come together with brothers and sisters in Christ so that I can continue to seek you and to grow in you. And if we're having struggles in our faith, if we're having struggles in our belief, if we're having struggles in our life, then we need not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And that's what the author of Hebrews tells his audience, and that's, good instruction for us today but what did he say before that in verse 24 and let us be concerned about one another in order to promote love and good works isn't that a beautiful thing and let us be concerned about one another let me ask you today are you concerned about other people in your life now the obvious answers to that question should be yes but if we're honest maybe it's not We get pretty concerned about our own life. We get pretty concerned about what we're going through and our jobs and our family and our troubles. And and, and oftentimes, it's, it's easy for us to fall into that trap that we become so concerned with the things that we have going on that there might be a brother and sister in Christ who has a need and we totally miss it because we're too concerned about ourselves. But the call of Christianity is to consider others as more important than yourself. Philippians chapter 2 tells us that. That's one thing that's so important for us as a body of Christ. That we never become a people who are selfish. But that we are a people who are all about serving one another. That we are a people who consider others as more important than ourselves. Maybe there are some needs around you today. Maybe there's some that you've overlooked. It's okay. Ask God to help you to see them. We don't always see those things. Sometimes we do get caught up in ourselves and we get so caught up in what we're doing that we kind of miss the things that are around us. But we need to pray to God and say, God, help me to see see ways that I can help those brothers and sisters in Christ around me who are part of this body. God, help me to help them. That we can lift one another up. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Let us lift one another up in love and in good works. Now, we've already seen here last week, we saw the mention of faith. We saw the mention of hope. Here we see a mention of love. Sometimes you see these three things together. Uh, the most common place you probably recognize that is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. All that remains is faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. These are the things that are, that are crucial to us as Christians, that we have faith, that we have hope, and that we have love for one another, that we love one another, that we promote love for one another, that we make sure that everything we do is building somebody up and not tearing them down. It's important for us to do that as brothers and sisters in Christ. We don't want to fall into the trap to begin to talk about other brothers and sisters in Christ in this church, to begin to cause divisions in this church. That's not promoting love. That's promoting promoting hatred, bitterness, anger, 
That's not what we want to promote. Too many times in churches, that's what's promoted. There's this click and there's that click. And this one talks about that one and that one talks about the other one. And people are in real need and we're too busy arguing about stupid little things that don't matter. Because we don't consider others as more important than ourselves. And we're not promoting good works. We're not promoting love. We need to promote love for one another, and we need to promote good works, the works that are going to be for the kingdom of God. That's why we come together as a body of Christ, is to promote the kingdom of God, is to serve God in everything that we do. We need to be reminded of that. Because sometimes God blesses us and he's good with ministries that we do or people that are reached or whatever it is. And we thank God that we can do that. But we should never seek to do that for a pat on the back. We should never seek to do it so we can tell everybody else in the community, all the other churches, well, you know, here's what we did. Oh, well, that's good that y'all did that. But we did twice as many shoeboxes as y'all. But praise the Lord. That's precious what y'all did. We should never fall into that, into that trap of thinking that, that we've done more or never get discouraged because another church does more than us and whatever it is. We're called to do what we can do, what God has placed on us, what God has given us the ability to do. And there's no amount that's too little or no amount that's too much because we need to do it all for the glory of God. And we don't want to fall into the trap of, of promoting ourselves, but we want to come together so that we can promote love amongst one another and good works for the glory of God. He finishes here at the end of this passage, end of verse 25, not staying away from our worship meetings as some habitually do, but encouraging each other, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Encouraging one another. Do we do a good job of that? Do you do a good job of encouraging people? Maybe you do, I don't know. But if you don't, you need to try to. You need to try to say an encouraging word. Now, here is what the easiest thing in the world to do is. It's easy to say a discouraging word. That doesn't take no trouble at all to find something negative to say. But what we need to try to do is find an encouraging word. Try to find something positive to say. Now, if you want negative t negativity, you walk out into the world, you turn on the news, you will be bombarded with negativity. But in the body of Christ... We need to find some, some, some peace and some rest. We need to find some encouragement. If you can't find any peace and encouragement and love in the body of Christ, then we're doomed. Because you're not going to find it outside of the body of Christ. So when we come together, we need to come together as men and women, as children of God who encourage one another. Encourage one another when, when you know somebody is down and struggling and, and wanting to give up. We need to be those who encourage one another. We need to be those when a brother and sister in Christ is not here to say, I missed you, to call and to check on them and just to encourage them and to pray for them. This is what builds the body of Christ. This is what strengthens our faith. So when those times of adversity come, we do not have a crisis of faith. We do not turn from Jesus Christ, but that we cling to Jesus Christ. And through the help of our brothers and sisters in Christ around us, we grow. We strengthen ourselves. But the worst thing that we could possibly do in the midst of, of hard times is to separate ourselves. It's the worst thing we could possibly do. In our worst times, often we want to be alone. We don't want to be around anybody else. But when we're alone, we're an easy target. You ever watch those nature shows? You see all these animals, they travel in packs. Sometimes you see the lions are trying to get one. They don't go after the strongest ones. They don't go after the whole pack. They kind of circle the pack. They wait until they can find one who's maybe weak and one who's smaller, and they wait to get it alone from the rest of the pack. Why? Because it's an easy target. But there is, there is safety and security in the presence of God and brothers and sisters in Christ. But the moment we get out from the pack, the moment our sin, the moment our doubt begins to draw us away, we become an easy target for the devil who is like a roaring lion looking for one who devour. And he will devour us if we are not careful. So we need to be a body of brothers and sisters in Christ who seek God, who come together, who love one another, who promote love and good works, who considers others as more important than ourselves, and who are ready for the days of trouble when they come. And when will they come? I don't know. 
I guarantee you there's days of trouble that are going to come in your life. I don't know what way they'll, 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 they'll uh, take place, but they'll come. He says here at the end of this verse, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now, I don't know what day he's talking about there. About half your translations are going to have that capitalized. Uh, some interpreters believe that being the day of the Lord, uh, the return of Christ. Uh, others just uh, see that as a, as a day of difficulty that's approaching uh, in the context, a day that might be coming for the audience that's here. I don't know. We need to be prepared for all those days. We need to be prepared for the day that Jesus Christ will return. But until he returns, we need to be prepared for the difficult days that are undoubtedly going to come in your life. There are going to be seasons of pain. There are going to be seasons of heartache. There are going to be seasons of hardship. There's going to be seasons of death. There are going to be hard times in your life, and there are going to be times probably for every one of us, if it's not already been, that our faith is shaken. And on those days, we need to seek God with all of our heart and do not rely on our own understanding. We need to come together with brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to be in the Word of God. We need to encourage one another, and we do not need to forsake the assembling of ourselves together because there should be power and love and grace and beauty and joy and peace in the body of Christ. I pray that as a body of Christ that we, we exhibit those qualities, that we are there for one another, that we love one another, and that all we do we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. All we do, we do it for the glory of God. Maybe there are some of you today and you're having a crisis of faith and you're really struggling. I want to pray for you today. If you want to come down, I'll pray for you later. You want to pray where you are, pray where you are. You want to come down and kneel as we have this time of invitation. But if God is dealing with you today and you're struggling, then you keep struggling with God, but do not give up on God. Do not turn away from God because there is no one else that we can turn to. Maybe you know somebody that's struggling today. Maybe somebody in this church. Maybe somebody in your family. Reach out to them. Pray for them. Encourage them. Let them know that you love them and that God loves them because it's that strength of God. It's this blessing of community that God gives us and what a blessing it is that God doesn't send us out on our own to make it through this world and its struggles, but God brings all of us here together just as he has today, so that we can grow in his word, so that we can seek him, and so that we can encourage one another. Let us be found faithful to do that today. Father God, we come to you. We thank you for your good word. I pray, God, that if there is one who is struggling today, that you would help them, that you'd meet them in their struggle, dear Lord. You know that life is hard. You know that we are weak, and so we need your help, dear Lord. Maybe it is true of some of us in here today that we believe but dear Lord, we need you to help our unbelief. God, I, I, I wish I knew all the answers to all the questions, dear Lord. But I don't know all the answers to all the questions as to why you do the things you do and why you allow things that you allow. But dear Lord, I do believe that you are good. And I pray that you would help us never to forget that. It's easy to say that you're good. It's easy to trust you without question when times are good. But dear Lord, I know that when times are hard, that's when it really really get serious so God I pray that even if we think we are ready to stand in the midst of, of, of hardships in life that you really help us to be ready that you help our hearts to be strengthened dear Lord that when those times come and those days of difficulty come that we would not give up on you that we would continue to stand firm in you dear Lord Do we continue to trust in the cross of Jesus Christ that our faith would not waver that our hope would continue to be strong and that our love for you would grow, that our love for one another would grow, dear Lord. I pray, God, that you would help us to be a body of Christ that is continually gathered for your glory, that we come together, dear Lord, to hear from you, to learn your word, to grow in you, that we come together, dear Lord, to help one another. Maybe there are some today that just, they just wasn't feeling it when they came, dear Lord. Maybe they're still not feeling it. Maybe, they just, maybe they're just struggling. I pray, God, that you would help them not to leave without experiencing your presence today. I pray, God, that you'd give them some peace and some joy and some comfort. I pray, God, that you just let them receive a blessing from being here, dear Lord. If it's nothing else, a blessing of a hug from a brother and sister in Christ or an encouraging word or, or maybe your word that we read today, whatever it is, God, I pray that we would all leave here today 
saying that we have received a blessing by being able to gather together here to worship you. God, maybe there are some here today and they do not know Jesus Christ. I pray today that they would. I pray that they would repent of their sins, God. That they would ask you to forgive them. That they would quit living for themselves and they would live for Jesus Christ. God, I pray that if any made that decision today, that they would come forward here in a moment in this time of invitation, dear Lord, that we can celebrate. God, maybe there are some today that are just struggling and they're just right in the midst of it, dear Lord. It's serious, God. And I pray that you just comfort them and strengthen them. If they need prayer, I encourage them to come forward, dear Lord, so that I can pray for them so that this body, these brothers and sisters in Christ, as they see there's a need, that they can begin to pray, God. But I pray, God, that you would work in our midst today that your Holy Spirit would be among us today, that we would seek you today, that we would find you today, that our faith would be stronger today when we leave than it was when we came. Help us to be ready for whatever is before us, dear Lord. No matter what hardships and and difficulties we may face, dear Lord, I pray that you give us the strength to stand firm in our faith. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.